uh, who he is. Eric used to be a bail bondsman, uh, but he left that lucrative and posh lifestyle for an exciting new venture in the consumer physical market space. Uh, ear shears. They're that great. Um, ear shears are his flagship product and make trimming ear hair a breeze. He says, it's really an untapped market of which I'm thankful to be dominating. Uh, he also goes by mad clouds all over the internet, which is symbolic of his hatred for moisture. So please welcome Eric by. Excited about the opportunity. 
So while Ellie's napping, or when she goes to bed, or any other free time at lunch, whatnot, I start reading and teaching myself. One day we were on the floor playing, and we were rolling a ball back and forth uh, to each other. She's like, I don't know, 14 months, somewhere in there. And I noticed as the ball rolls past her, it takes her a second to like catch up with it. Now these are skills you develop early on, and you, know, you don't even think about them after that. But watching my daughter, playing with my daughter, you know, I just started noticing these things. So I thought to myself, I can create a game that's very simple, it's just uh, move, movement on the screen that she can interact with. And so right then I um, worked on a game called Color Dots and was finally released it to the App Store. It's a very simple app, uh, like I said, dot bounces around the screen, once you pop it, two more show up, once you pop those, three more show up. There's no high scores or achievements, it's specifically meant to drive engagement for Ellie. To develop her eye hand coordination and motion tracking. So, Color Docs was not an instant success. It wasn't featured by Apple and it didn't make gobs of money. But that's not really why I made it. I made it to help Ellie um, develop her cognitive skills responsive, uh, with the responsive medium. I still consider Color Docs a huge success. Um, I, I built my own app, I learned how to code, I got it into the App Store. And the knowledge and experience they gained just from doing that outside of my work was really, really exciting, really rewarding. Built something just for Ellie. Awesome. Not only that, after I released my first game, I had this wonderful asset library. I already had the foundation, the buttons, the menu, the background, utility classes, and of course the dots. So I just ran with it. Elia started getting a little bit older and she's starting to try to feed herself. And I don't know if you've ever seen a baby try to feed herself. It's quite messy uh, and hilarious. So the eye-hand coordination and the finger dexterity, you just like scoop up food and put it in your mouth, you develop it. I mean, that's, that's how you know, growing up works. But I, I noticed it and I thought to myself, well, how, how can I make a game to help this, to, to make it um, easy for her to build her finger dexterity and whatnot. So shortly after, I released a game called Dot Collector, which is a very similar premise, but there's a different objective rather than just popping the dots. Now you're tapping the dot and dragging and moving it into um, a hole. Believe it or not, Dot Collector was not instant success. It wasn't featured by Apple and it didn't make me God some money. But again, it was the experience of developing something specifically for my daughter is where the reward, the fulfillment for myself came in. Shortly thereafter, I worked on some other games, uh, Color Squares, where you just um, clear the screen of multicolored tiles to work on eye-hand coordination and um, color recognition. When Ellie started to recognize numbers and, and getting frustrated with visualizing numbers, she could count until you know, went to 10, but actually visualizing and understanding their sequence, um, I came up with the idea for counting dots. Again, with the dots, I know all those dots. Uh, but so number one will show on the screen once you get that. Number two will show. Number one will show over the top, and so those that sequence will continue. If you tap something out of order, it's just you know friendly no kind of animation. But it but it's been great. I'm really happy with how Ellie's games has evolved. With Ellie has helped provide her some skills um, and entertainment along the way. I've had such a great time making them that I just didn't stop. Uh, I published 17 apps to the iOS App Store. My games have been played over 4 million times in over 200 countries. I have four apps on the Android, uh, Google Play, and Amazon App Store. I have a comprehensive website and a strong uh, social presence that, you know, I've, all, I've done all this outside of work. These are all extra things that I've done in, in addition to my full-time job. The collaboration, I get to meet such like-minded and focused people. Um, my best friend Nick, who believes in what Ellie's Games provides, has, and luckily he's a kick-ass Android developer, has offered to port my games over from iOS to Android. Um, so that's been super helpful. Last year, at Valley O'Connor, I met Jenny. Um, she makes a series of photo books or picture books for her kids, her kid called uh, Pikazoo. Pikazoo. Anyway, we got to talking and she, she explained like keywords and how important keywords are if you're not featured. And so overnight, I updated my keywords. Once the release went live, my profits increased 300% just overnight because I changed my keywords. So, and then we we developed a relationship. We started doing uh, peer reviews. We set up a support group where we meet once a week um, or twice twice a month. 
and we just kind of review our objectives, talk about you know what we've accomplished, what's worked, what hasn't, and, and just continue to inspire and, and engage with each other is, was very helpful. Um, social, I, I found someone online who's passionate about my brand, uh, what, what Elliot's Game stands for, and she's volunteered her time to help me manage the social presence because that is just a whole job in itself. I can spend hours doing it myself. Um, a wonderful photographer, um, Aldrin Estacio, really close friend. He, we've, he lives in the area. We've worked on a pick a book series, which is high def um, animals and uh, fruits. And then, of course, uh, the most talented guy I know, Kid Cam with Drew. It's been awesome to work with him. So just surrounding myself with these, you know, passionate people, all outside of work, it's just really, you know, it's helped me drive harder and, and learn more than I ever would on my own. So some unexpected rewards have been like the experience and the knowledge, as I've said, outside of my job. I get so focused when you're at work learning your specific skill sets, they don't really look outside of the box. And so this, this project has been really fulfilling in that, that expect, um, in that sense. Uh, the exposure has been awesome. Now I understand the intricacies of the App Store and how you know keywords work and all, and all that. The stories I hear from parents all over the world who have really enjoyed how Ellie's Games touched their children, helped them um, interact and learn their skill sets, and the pictures and videos that go along with it. It's just really, really heartwarming. Uh, someone playing my Connect the Dots game, uh, Color Squares, and another Color Squares. So the knowledge and the experience and the fun, the joy of actually making something for my daughter is where the success comes in for me. Um, money will come later. Next steps, I, I hope to do this full time. I'm really passionate about it. I really do enjoy uh, making the product. Um, so I hope to get it full time. Again, uh, also I'm a terrible uh, illustrator and animator, so I hope to meet someone and collaborate with them on that. Most importantly, to just keep, keep building games. So I got a one of Ryan with his real adorable audio, and uh, I've arranged a special guest to be here. She's over there. If, if <laughs> My daughter, Ellie, has come to support me in my talk, but she's shy. If you want to see her, she's over there. Yay! She's awesome. She's really cool. Uh, so, thanks for listening to my talk. I'm at Mad Clouds on Twitter. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Does anybody have any questions? Here. Here, I'll give you this microphone. Sorry. So I'm just a bit curious, um, so how do you get the time to work full time, be a triathlete, be a great father, and just sort of learn Objective-C on the side? That's a great question. Um, it's tough, it's tough. You know, you have to make those conscious choices like, what do I want? When I'm sitting down to watch TV, I can, you know, practice some things, you know, multitask in that sense. But you have to make, make the decisions like, well, am I going to go to sleep or am I going to, you know, learn an extra hour? Um, so just finding the time and making the time and staying focused on it. That's been really helpful. Someone else have a question? 